Oh, what's up fellow nerds? I'm your host Dr. McKay and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a breakdown of one of my favorite fighter interceptors, the F-302 from the Stargate universe. In this breakdown, I'll be covering all aspects of the craft from the history behind the fighter, the size of it, as well as its combat capabilities. But before we get started, if you like the content, feel free to hit that like button. Don't forget to comment your thoughts and hit that subscribe button to help support the channel. With all that said though, let's go. So let's begin with a brief history of the F-302. The history of the F-302 begins with the first attempt the Tauri made at creating a planetary defense program. This program began with the salvage of two Gaul death gliders and then the subsequent attempt at the merging of both Tauri and Gaul technologies together, resulting in the X-301 fighter interceptor. This gold human hybrid fighter was the combination of both the salvage death gliders and human add-ons. However, the ship had a failsafe built into it by the gold Apophis that would ultimately override the controls set a course for the ship to return to Chulak. This accident would then prompt the Tauri to focus on a purely man-made vehicle. The result? the X-302. This prototype fighter was designed similar to the gold death gliders in shape, but other than that, it is purely a human design. The prototype X-302 is an air and space multi-role fighter interceptor. Its main role would be planetary defense against, at this time, the gold. The prototype X-302 was also designed to be able to jump on its own into hyperspace, but after its initial test flight, it was determined to be too dangerous as the power source Naquadria, a highly energetic substance of Naquada, was too unstable and could cause the engines to explode when used to enter hyperspace. However, thanks to Jonas, Rodney and Sam, they figured out that the hyperdrive can be used briefly without any major overloads. The next step for the program was to perfect any issues from the prototype X302 and then mass produce the design, which brings us to the F302. The F302 entered service in late 2002 and was Earth's first major defense platform against the gold. The F302 was deployed around the world at various black sites and with the ability to be dismantled into sections, it can be deployed off-world through the Stargate to the various off-world bases for defense. Later on, after the construction of the X-33 Prometheus and the BC-304s, both vessels were outfitted with squadrons of F-302s, with the X-303 Prometheus being able to hold one full squadron of eight fighters and the BC-304 class holding two squadrons of 16 fighters. The F-302 has fought in many battles over its service life, from the disabling of Anubis' superweapon to the battle over Antarctica and even the battle over Osiris against the Pegasus replicators. This fire has proven time and time again that the Tauri is not to be underestimated in combat. So now we know the origins of the F-302, let's go over the specifications. The F-302 is a two-seat multi-role air and space fighter interceptor made almost entirely out of Naquada. It is 100% man-made with reverse engineered alien technologies built right into the craft. The F-302 initially was constructed by the US Air Force but is possibly now built by all Stargate participating countries on Earth. Now, to accurately work out the size of the F-302, I have created this grid of 2 meter squares with a 6 foot 2 or 1.88 meter tall pilot for scale. Then I searched high and low online for the dimensions of the F-302 and the size I keep finding are as follows. The F-302 has a length of 14.26 meters long with a width of 26.17 meters wide and a height of 5.92 meters high. Why it can't be whole numbers is beyond me, but for a comparison, here's the F-302 next to an FA-18E Super Hornet, which the FA-18E has a wingspan of 13.62 meters wide and a length of 18 meters long, making the F-302 double the width of the FA-18E. And to add more to the scale, I have placed our little pilot at various positions to give a more human scale to the aircraft. And just for good measure, here's an image from the show with people standing by and on top of the F-302, which within reason confirms the size of the F-302 I have here in this image. So now with the size out the way, let's go over the F-302's engines. 
The F302 has three types of engines, four if you include the hyperdrive, but I'm not including it for the full service F302 as we never see it used after the F302 is used to take out Anubis' super weapon. So, with the F302, the, the three engine types are two air breathing jet propulsion engines for in atmospheric flight, two aerospike engines for high altitude and space flight, and lastly, a single rocket booster that gives the F-302 enough thrust and speed to enter orbit. The F-302 can reach hypersonic speeds of around Mark 6 in atmosphere, which is equivalent to 3600 miles per hour without the main rocket booster. But with the main rocket booster, it can obtain orbital speeds of which are around 17,600 miles per hour or more depending on which orbit is desired. Due to the speed of the F-302 and its maneuvering capabilities of an F-22 Raptor, it is fitted with inertial dampeners to dampen the G-forces exerted on the pilot and co-pilot in tight turns at high speeds. This gives the F-302 the maneuvering capabilities of an F-22 and the ride of a 747 passenger plane. The F-302 also does not need a long runway for takeoff, allowing for versatility in base design on off-world planets. The F-302 is designed for two crew, a pilot and a co-pilot, but can be flown by just a single pilot. It uses an advanced navigational computer for flight navigation. This also aids the pilot while in deep space. Now with the propulsion and navigation systems covered, let's talk weapons. The F-302 armaments consist of two nose-mounted railguns for close to mid-range combat against enemy fighters. The F-302 is also fitted with a range of external ordnance, of which are four wing-mounted long-range Naquita-tipped AIM-120 air-to-air missiles for enemy fighters and ships. Also, the external ordnance mounts can be capable of equipping Naquita enhanced Mark IX nuclear missiles for engaging enemy combat ships and capital ships, if the mission requires. All weapons are controlled by the pilot or co-pilot using computer-aided targeting and off-bore site targeting systems. The F-302 also has the ability to carry a sizable payload on the underside of the ship, like the payload consistent of the Replicator satellite in the show. However, this payload bay can be used for additional weapons, but this remains to be seen within the show. So now with all the weapons covered, let's go over some additional features of the F-302. Other features include an onboard grappling cable for grappling to things in space like other ships and asteroids, an autopilot feature for automated flight if the need arises, ejector seats for the crew's safety if damaged in battle, an artificial gravity generator, blah, 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 an artificial gravity generator to generate gravity, gravity, an artificial gravity generator to generate gravity inside the cockpit while in space, a long-range communications array for communication with the squadron or home base, and radar-like sensor array for detecting ships and objects within a 600 km range. And lastly, the F-302 has wheeled landing gear for landing on runways like most aircraft do. The power source of the F-302 is unknown, but I imagine it is a combination of standard aircraft power and NACWDA enhanced power supply. So that's my breakdown of the F-302 fighter interceptor from the Stargate universe. This fighter is straight up one of my favorite fighters in sci-fi, even being up where even being up there with the best of the fighters from across the other sci-fi universes. The F-302 has definitely earned its spot in the sci-fi hall of fame and it will be remembered for all time. So there we go then guys. This video has been so much fun to make and I'm so thankful to all you guys for supporting this channel we have reached over 500 subscribers and i really can't thank you all enough for the wonderful support and comments you have given it's so amazing so thank you all so very much i've been your host dr mckay in today's breakdown video and if you like the video feel free to like comment and subscribe to help support the channel out and please do leave your thoughts on the f3 too so thank you all for watching and until the next time i'll catch you all then cheers and goodbye Bye-bye.